A Florida judge hands Governor Ron DeSantis a victory by reinstating the ban on school mask mandates. The first district court of appeals ruled the Tallahassee judge should not have lifted an automatic stay two days ago, hit, uh, halting the mask mandate ban. Now the state can resume imposing financial penalties on the 13 Florida school boards that have mask mandates in place. The U.S. Department of Education has a grant program for school districts that lose money implementing uh, anti-coronavirus practices. Now, right now, Florida is reporting more than 3.4 million cases and over 48,000 deaths in the state. Now, in addition uh, to that issue, the second largest school district is requiring its students over the age of 12 to be vaccinated. Uh, let's go to Los Angeles, where the L.A. Unified School District says their 630,000 students uh, must be vaccinated by January 10th, 2022. Student athletes and those participating in extracurricular activities need to be vaccinated by the end of October. The school boards vote protect students and staff while keeping the cl classrooms open for in-person learning. Let's go to my panel, Michael Inhomtep, host of the African History uh, Show, Amisha Cross, political commentator, Kelly Bethea, uh, communication strategist. All right, glad to have all three of you here. Amisha, I'll start with you. Let's talk about Florida first. Uh, here you have, of course, uh, the, the uh, here you have the courts first handing DeSantis a loss, now a victory. It is still utterly irrational to sit here and how, watch how adamant DeSantis is against these school mask mandates when the school boards are elected people who are trying to protect their students, faculty, and staff. And we are seeing uh, numerous teachers and support staff who are dying due to COVID. Exactly, Roland. At this point, it makes absolutely no sense. But in Ron DeSantis's head, he is running a national election. This is him campaigning for president or at least a nominee for the Republican Party in 2024. It does not matter to him that school teachers, school staff, uh, support staff, bus drivers, all of those individuals are coming down with COVID and many of them are dying. Those numbers do not matter. He knows what the what the hospital bed crisis is. He knows that even though, you know, originally just a few months ago, he was being heralded as someone who did COVID right. And then the Delta variant hit, and he decided to ignore everything that the CDC said. He decided to ignore everything that doctors in the state of Florida said. He decided to ignore the science. He is literally raging against the machine at this point because his understanding is that Donald Trump is still the leader of the party. And as long as Donald Trump is touting everything anti-vax, everything anti-mask, he feels as though he has to come trudging right behind him, being louder, being stronger, being prouder in this, even though it is literally marching Floridians to their graves. Uh, why these people are following uh, this man is crazy. But Kelly, what's even more stunning, his poll numbers are dropping big time. This is not popular among citizens. He's up for re-election next year, and so he's trying to run a presidential campaign. You might want to focus your 2022 race first. I mean, I would focus on just saving his constituents' lives first, period. Um, like Amisha was saying, he's acting as though Trump will help him in the next election cycle. And as history has shown in the past couple of years alone, Trump doesn't help anybody but himself. And the cognitive dissonance with people within the Republican Party regarding Trump is just so, it's so great to the detriment of not only themselves, but their constituents. Um, Floridians are dying. Specifically, Floridians who are unvaccinated and children specifically are dying. And it's almost as if they do not care for the sake of their own political party, their own political standing within that party. And it is just incredibly unfortunate that we are going to see it uh, get worse before it gets better just because people are hard-headed. Simple as that. The Republican Party has, has made a calculus, Michael, and that is they think they can win by opposing mask mandates, opposing uh, President Joe Biden when it comes to vaccinations. That's that, this is a political calculus that they have made. It has nothing to do with public health. It has to do with politics. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the, a lot of the people they're listening to have been vaccinated. Donald Trump got vaccinated. Their Lord and Savior, Donald Trump, got vaccinated. Okay? Fox News, where they get a lot of information from, Fox News has a vaccine mandate. If you want to work at Fox News, you have to be vaccinated. Uh, just uh, maybe two months ago, you had Republicans, some Republicans from the House of Representatives that had a press conference that were encouraging people to— uh, Steve Scalise was one of them from Louisiana, 
that were encouraging people to get the vaccine. So these are culture wars. And, 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 and Ron DeSantis, uh, as Amisha said, Ron DeSantis uh, wants to uh, uh, run for president. He wants to win the presidency. Uh, maybe he forgot he has to run for re-election in Florida. Hopefully he loses. Hopefully he gets crushed. But then, uh, you, you know, so, you know, when we look at this, brother, this is the difference between a religion and a cult. In a religion, your Savior dies for you. In a cult, you die for your Savior. If you look at what's taking place in Mississippi, I was reading an article from the Clarion Ledger from August 24th. 30,000 students, staff, and teachers have been sent home to quarantine within like the first two weeks of school opening because of coronavirus. There's about 5,700 students in Mississippi schools that have been diagnosed with coronavirus. So what's going to happen is I think some of these white people are going to turn on DeSantis, turn on uh, Governor Abbott in Texas, and some of these other ones. When their children start dying of COVID and their nieces and nephews, things like this, I think it's really, I think for some of them, not all of them, some of them just stuck on stupid, but for some of them, it's really going to hit home, and I think some of them, some of them are going to turn on them. Well, uh, you, you would certainly hope so, and it's just the obstinance, Anisha, uh, that we're seeing in Florida, that we're seeing in Texas, that is just astounding, and I'm trying to figure out what the hell are they waiting for? Turn on them now. It, absolutely. And I'm not convinced um, to the point that Michael just made. I'm not convinced that they're going to turn. One thing that these Republicans have learned and have dug their heels in the sand in very well is consistent messaging, even in crisis mode, even if even against a backdrop of massive death, even in cases like what's happening in Mississippi, where you see all of these pregnant women who are dropping dead and doctors are trying to save the babies because they refuse to get the COVID-19 vaccine. There's so much information out here about the efficacy of the vaccine, about the strength of the vaccine, about it saving lives, um, you know, debunking a lot of the myths that we've heard spread, many of which came from the anti-vax crowd, as well as many Republican leaders across various Southern states. Yet, you don't see Republican voters honestly giving a damn. I don't think that's going to change. They have turned this into a culture war. They have turned this into a us versus them. They see this as a Biden vaccine. They see this as a Biden initiative. And they are fighting tooth and nail against it, largely because they drew public health down partisan lines. They see taking a vaccine as basically surrendering to the Democratic Party, surrendering to, surrendering to a socialist agenda. They do not see this as a public health crisis. They see this as some type of man-made government trying to force you into, you know, taking away, taking away your, your rights. This is completely ridiculous, and it's a lot bigger, I think, than sometimes what the argument is drilled down to, because the information is there. The access is there. These are individuals who have chosen to dig their heels, their heels in the sand and are willing to die for it, literally. And they're also going to go to the polls, and they're going to vote red. They're going to vote with the R in front, up and down the ballot like they always do. I don't see this changing in those states at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just absolutely crazy what we're seeing. Uh, and it, it makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, and uh, I, again, Michael, I, I, I don't have a lot of faith mm -hmm. uh, in Republicans uh, saying they're going to sit here and turn their backs on Ron DeSantis or Greg Abbott. Greg Abbott in Texas is sitting on $55 million in his campaign mm -hmm. war chest. Granted, his numbers are way down, uh, but I think you're going to see a lot more of this uh, as we as we move towards uh, 2022, and yeah, I think that the problem, like right now, one in four kids are, are, uh, are uh, have gotten COVID. Uh, look, if, if you see deaths increase among children, then you might begin to see a change of attitude. That's, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. I said when when their when their children start dying, not all of them. Some of them are just stuck on stupid. Some, seriously, some of them are just stuck on stupid, and we see stories of them dying every day. I'm talking about adults, but. When, see, we're at the beginning of the school year. And in the South, a lot of those schools, they went back to school sooner than schools up north. So uh, when you start having a lot of these white children dying, okay, of COVID, and, they're in, and they've been in the hospital for days, things like this, not all of them are going to change. But some of the, I think it's going to change some of these people. They're going to realize, you know, because you got to understand, a lot of these people in the, in the South are stuck on stupid. A lot of them are dumbed down voters, not all of them. But a lot of these people that keep voting for Republicans are dumbed down voters, anti-science. The information is there. Half of them can't read. Let's be honest. The information is there. Half of them can't read. But when it starts hitting home and your daughter, your son, your nieces, your nephews, things like that are dead 
because of COVID, then it's going to slap them upside the head. Some of them. Uh, yeah, some of them. Uh Folks, back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Seek.com was a black-owned company uh, founded by Mary Spiel. It's a virtual reality company where you can actually go there, look at their uh, virtual reality content. A couple of devices they actually have for sale that you might be interested in. First off, their VR headset allows for you to slide your phone right in and experience that virtual reality content uh, on their side of watching 360-degree video. Also, uh, there are 360-degree headphones, a tremendous base used for gaming, Bluetooth, phone calls, you name it. Uh, folks, you can get these two at Seek com using this promo code rmvip21 rmvip21 uh you buy one or the other or even both a portion of the proceeds come back to us here at roland martin unfiltered and so uh we want you to check out seek.com and give it a try